Good morning, everybody. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ and all the saints here in Central California. I'm uh, coming to you today from our OR closet. That's why the funny hat and the funny coat. And you should see the rest of me in it. I look like a marshmallow. Um, anyway, I was up here in the ORs and I just happened to be doing some uh, patching and I found a few quiet moments. I thought, oh, well, I'll make a video. Um, I, I for, I'd forgotten that I'd even mentioned the uh, wireless controller issue we had, and I never did talk about what the what the outcome of that was. So somebody reminded me in the comments. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, that was a weird one, but in retrospect, it's not weird. It's only weird until you solve the problem, and then it's like, oh. So what the problem was, was I was trying to get into one of my wireless controllers to check something, and um, it wouldn't come up. Hmm. So uh, I checked the second, well, we have two wireless controllers, and one ready to run an active standby uh, availability pair. The standby was up and running, obviously, because wireless was working. So uh, I get into, I couldn't get the other one running, so I asked my server buddy, Leo, he runs the virtual server environment, and these wireless controllers are, are virtual servers. Um, so I said, hey, can you uh, check on this controller? He says, sure, and it checks on it and pulls up the uh, console window window for it and it's got a kernel panic. It's the underlying OS on those things are Linux. You guys have asked me about Linux operating systems and yeah, that's one of the few Linux servers that we have. And I uh, thought, oh, well, that's no good. So we're looking at it. I didn't know what the heck I was looking at it because I am not a Linux guy, nor am I a server guy anymore. Um, so I told him, well, can you just power cycle it? And he says, sure. So he power cycles the virtual machine. It comes back up. Everything looks normal. And I'm like, okay, great. So I fail everything back over to the new machine. And uh, actually, I didn't. I take that back. It fails over automatically after about 10 minutes. So everything feels over, I think, okay, well, crisis averted, we rebooted the machine, and it's all working now. Um, and then I start getting reports of uh, employee wireless not working. And employee wireless is just a pre-shared key that gets them into the guest wireless network. Um, and the guest wireless network runs off of a captive portal. Um, they go there, brings up a web page, they read a bunch of legal disclaimers and click I agree. Um, that wasn't working. And so everything on that one VLAN was just not working. So I think, huh, well, that's no good. I better call Extreme. So I called Extreme Networks. Um, I got overseas support. I thought, you know what? No, thank you. I will wait until in the morning um, where I can get some uh, onshore support. No offense to overseas support, but it's I, I just I prefer dealing with onshore because they work in my time zone. I don't want to be called in the middle of the night by somebody from overseas saying, "Oh, can you try this out and check it?" No. Um, so what I did is I I powered down the uh, con the controller that had locked up. Everything failed back over to the secondary controller, and everything was working. So we had a quiet night. Now, the next morning, um, came in, got on the phone with Extreme. First thing, guy was very helpful. We started going through a bunch of different troubleshooting methods. He did wire captures. He did oh, wire captures from the controller, wire captures from the AP. I did wire captures from the firewall because the firewall is where the uh, DHCP comes from for this guest network. This is a, um, the guest network is unroutable. It's a 192.168 network, and the rest of my networks are all on a 10 network. Um, so uh, that's the way we do it, so they, they can't go anywhere. So anyway, still nothing's working, nothing's working. And then finally we start looking at the V switch, and um, couldn't find any differences there. So the guy says, well, can we try just migrating this controller over to whatever machine the other controller is on? I said, sure, we can do that. Although it's not quite as simple as that. It's in a different, um, 
So our primary wireless controller runs in a Nutanix environment that's here at the hospital. The secondary runs in the disaster recovery data center Nutanix environment. And so when you fail it, I mean, you can migrate it over, no problem, but it takes longer. It takes about, uh, I don't know, five, 10 minutes rather than being like seconds. So we migrated over and boom, it starts working just fine. Okay, so he's, he starts talking about the properties on our switches and we're like, no, 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 nothing's, nothing's changed in our switching environment. And uh, he's, he's wanting to go down that rabbit hole. And so I go to my boss and I say, hey, can you look at the properties for this V-switch and this V-switch? the new disaster recovery re-environment and the new environment and see if you see any differences so she jumps in there and she you know within like I don't know five minutes she goes ah I see the problem okay great and she says try it now well we got to fail it back so we we migrate it back fail migrate it back from the disaster recovery data center to our primary data center and uh, migrate it back and it's working again Oh, what did you do? So, and this is something I actually knew but forgot about. I'm going to turn you around so you can see, hopefully see this. So, bottom line, it's promiscuous mode. So, she went into the controller settings, and I don't know how well you can see that, but there's a uh, mo there's a setting right up here. I've highlighted it. It says uh, promis promiscuous mode. We're going to override it and set it to accept, which means basically we're going to accept any packet that shows up on the interface, whether it's destined to us or not. So uh, programs like Wireshark need to enable promiscuous mode on the adapters. Oops, I'm making my making my screen move. They need to uh, be able to capture every single packet that comes across that network interface. So that's what she did. She'd gone in there and enabled that. Well, how did it get us disabled? Here's the thing. So uh, our server guy has been adding new Nutanix hosts. Uh, he got a project upgrade him this year. So I like. One, two, three, four, five. Five new Nutanix hosts added this year. And um, so what had happened, we think, is the kernel panic, we don't know why that was caused yet because Extreme forgot all about that and they were not interested in looking. So neither was I really. Um, what had happened, anyway, I'm getting off track. What had happened is he set these new Nutanix nodes up, but he didn't uh, set up promiscuous mode on this particular V switch. Uh, what does he call it? Um, port group. He calls it a port group. So on this particular port group, um, promiscuous mode wasn't enabled on any of the new servers. So that's what had happened when he rebooted the server. It migrated itself and came up on one of the newer ones because, you know, they're faster and better. And, um, you know, the new VM, v, vSphere thought that, well, it'll run better over here. These are newer and faster. And it probably does run better over there, but uh, you just can't get, get wire, guess wireless because no promiscuous mode. So she went through on the vSwitch and she did it on each one of these uh, new nodes and enabled promiscuous mode and everything works. So, uh, yeah, promiscuous mode is needed on the wireless controllers, Extreme says so. Um, what do they say? There's actually a knowledge base article on it. It says, why promiscuous mode? Let's find out why. The controller is not an ordinary host. It is performing some switching and sometimes routing functions. Hence, the unusual choice of virtual switch settings in VMware. Hmm. Since the controller is acting like a switch that has, a, has trunk port interfaces, it needs to receive and transmit frames with many different MAC addresses. This is what the promiscuous mode 
and forged transmit settings permit. So we're not only being promiscuous, we're forging too. Sounds, sounds sinful. Anyway, they, they say you need to enable promiscuous mode and you know, it's their product, they're right, so. Anyway, so that's the, uh, that's the long sad tale of, uh, of the wireless controller going down last week. So to continue the sadness, uh, the sad news I have is uh, my boss is leaving for greener pastures. She's uh, accepted a job with a, a different county. Uh, we're employees of a county over here in California and uh, she's taken a job with a different county. It's the county next door. So I personally think it's a mistake because she's not gonna get to work with this anymore. But um, yeah, she's, she thinks it's gonna be good for her. She thinks she's gonna have more career opportunities over there. And she's still young, I get that. She's, she's still trying, her career's still going like that. My career's going like this. And that's the way I want it. So anyway, so um, maybe, maybe not we'll have a job opening here. I don't know what management's gonna do. I, I've told them you know, in certain terms, I cannot do this job alone. I do need to be able to take vacations and get sick and not worry and not have them call me at home sick. The network's down. It's like, okay, well, we, 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 I think he realizes we do need another person. I just don't think he's really happy about having to look for a new person at Christmas time. So um, I'll keep you guys updated about that. If any, we're not going to bring people from overseas. I'm very sorry. They're just, they're not going to do that. Um, you got to be a, uh, at least have a green card, I think, to work here. If not, be a U.S. citizen. I'm not. I am not sure. I don't know. But I do know we are. I'm sorry, guys. You guys, my my viewers overseas. I am very sorry. We are not going to bring anybody in from overseas. It's just not going to happen. So, um, but hopefully, somebody here in Central California, or somebody who wants to move to Central California, that might be an opportunity for you. So, maybe. I don't know yet. So uh, we'll keep our ears open about that. So that's all I got for this week. Uh, if you like what you saw, click the subscribe button, click the notification bell, thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever you prefer. Leave a comment if you got any questions, concerns, prayer requests. Um, I am going to start doing. A, I'm going to start publishing a, a short with a, a prayer for the people that have asked for prayer requests. So look for that coming up too. So I do pray for you guys when you ask. Um, I pray for everybody, but I pray for the, especially for the people that ask. Um, first thing in the morning, as soon as I get up. So that's all I got for this week, guys. We'll catch y'all next week. God bless. And where's the button? There.